from New York City is Wendy Williams. Today, Blair Underwood, the handsome star of the new hot show, Ironside, tells Wendy how he keeps his 19-year marriage hot and spicy. Plus, Life and Style's Jordy Lippy has the inside scoop on a real housewife of New Jersey brawl and shocking lawsuit. And all the latest juicy hot topics. We've got such a good show planned for you. Okay, and then the hot topics. Forget about it. You heard about Chris and Bruce? They're officially separated. We'll talk. Miley Cyrus has a hot new hookup, and we've got the proof, and it is the dirtiest story I've told so far this season. And then we have the inside scoop on the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Remember that, that fight that we saw last week? Well, um, it ended in a lawsuit, so we're going to talk about that as well. Let's get started. It's time for hot topics. So much. All right, have a seat. Let's get started. There's a lot to share with you. First of all, it's official. Bruce and Chris have separated after 22 years of marriage. Oh. Not all. You mean good for Bruce? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He finally found his man parts, and, and you know, and he did something about it. Oh, please. Eight seasons of that show, and he's been she. She treats him like, well, less than lovely. <laughs> wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? So they told E! News that, um, here's the quote, we're, uh, we are uh, living separately and we're much happier this way. What an odd thing to say. <laughs> but we saw this coming, so it wasn't really a big deal. Like, I root for love and I root for marriage and I root for fighting your thing. But when you clearly see, at least through the TV, that this is not working, I mean, you know, um, then they're saying, according to TMZ, Bruce was the one who wanted to move out. Good for him. <laughs> Well, you know, we had reported, and you had seen it at other out outlets, that um, Bruce uh, has been living in Malibu. And this all kind of started when Kim came home with Baby North, and then the house was filled with um, e-cameras and, and, I guess, governesses and nannies, and it was all about the baby. And as big as the house is, it just wasn't big enough for Bruce because, because Bruce was driv being driven insane by you know, all the hubbub in the house. So, reportedly, that's the reason that he moved to this Malibu place. And then, you know, Chris was working on her talk show, and so it was probably, like, nuts in the house. Um, reportedly, uh, the reason that they've announced the separation, uh, I told you it was, it was Bruce who wanted it. Chris reportedly didn't want it because it's bad for the Kardashian brand. <laughs> Bruce has finally had enough. My thought about Bruce, though, is, you know, while Bruce doesn't have a backbone, I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that uh, his sons, Brody and, you know, the other ones, I'm hoping that his sons, who are also allegedly living in this Malibu house with him, are putting it in his father's ear. Come on, Dad, you missed out on a lot of our childhood. You know, Bruce has a lot of narcissism with him, with his, him as well. Um, he's just an older man now and probably appreciates smelling the roses of life. You remember when he was running and jumping in on the Wheaties box and everything? <laughs> He also was um, a less than good husband to his first wife, um, and he's admitted it himself. So, you know, he was kind of absentee while, you know, his fabulous hair and back in the 70s, and he was, he was the guy. And so now he just wants to sit back and smell the roses. You know, he's always ordering these gadgets, the airplanes, and remember when he did the ping pong match? And anyway, always something. So, you know, Bruce, good for you. By the way, 
You're gonna see all of this unfold. Uh, they're filming now for Keeping Up with the Kardashians, so you're gonna see it all go. Bruce, though, separation isn't divorce. You just need to get the divorce. Like, don't be ghetto and only separate. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it looks like uh, the Jenner divorce, divorce has brought uh, Chloe and Lamar closer together. Well, they're spotted in this car near Chris's house. According to the Daily Mail, this is the first time that we've seen a picture of them together in 129 days. <laughs> Before her mother made the announcement about the divorce, Chloe did her own venting about her own relationship on Twitter. And here's what she said some of the things that she said anyway she said um if you love excuse me if i love you it's a deep forever love ride till the end family slash friend it's simply called love i take it seriously don't judge unless you are in it and then she tweeted again i know and then she tweeted again it says two things define you your patience when you have nothing and your attitude when you have everything and and she tweeted, my motto lately, bleep you. <laughs> um, I root for love, but there are two things to me that get in the way of a happy marriage. One is some sort of addiction, you know, and coming from a place of addiction, I couldn't imagine, like, my husband putting up with it if I went back to the coke and everything and, and smoke crack, which I told you I've done that, too. I could not imagine that. And if he picked it up, I'd have to be out. I'm sorry. I, like, I'll get you help, but I have to be out. It's, this is me talking. Addiction and, um, uh, oh, and a baby outside the marriage. <laughs> done. Done. There are other things I can put up with, but not those two. So, uh, Chloe, whatever you decide, good for you. Personally speaking... I would divorce in the name of love and friendship. <laughs> that's me. That's, that's me. I would. Addicts, addicts are sneaky. They're liars. And if you have an addict who's making, you know, who has $30 million in the bank like Lamar, well, my God, can you imagine the sneakiness and the lies just amp it up? I don't have time for that. Not at 29 years old. She's 29 years old. She has a chance to find another and build a life. Anyway, uh, there was more... Uh, there was more wedding drama last night on I Dream of Nene. Um, all season long, Nene's been asking Greg to sign this prenuptial before they married. And last night, the discussion didn't go so well. Notice how they're in the bedroom and um, in the bed, which is the last place I picture <laughs> Nene and Greg. Just, you know, but I, but I've, I've said that before. I, I feel like, that, you know, they're not doing it anymore. Like, they probably sleep in separate rooms. And that, and, and that this is about... This is about keeping the money coming in from Bravo, and they're married in the name of friendship, please. Anyway, take a look, and then we'll talk. It's your right to protect what you have from the person that you're with in case you ever end. No, that's not how it is. I want to share with you, and if you want me to share with you, then you need to sign this prenup, because if we ever fall out, I'm not gonna share with you. But at the end of the day, there will be a prenup. No. So, well, he did her wrong the first time. You know, I don't blame her, you know, this time around. But my thought is, is that this was probably another one of the plot lines that happened. You know, like, they might have been talking one day, Nene and Greg. And they say, you know what? If we get remarried, Nene, in my head, probably said to him, we can get a big paycheck from Bravo. And you know, I like you, Greg, so we can be roommates or whatever you call that when there's nothing, <laughs> when there's no smushing going on in the smushing room. We can, we can be roommates and it'll just work for everyone. So, okay, pull out the list of things that we're gonna make happen on this show to keep it interesting. First of all, you know you're gonna sign a prenup, but we're gonna make it seem like you don't wanna sign it, all right? Write that down. <laughs> Second of all, there's got to be fights within the bridal party. But I do believe Marlo doesn't like Diana and Diana doesn't like Marlo. Like, I do believe that part. Anyway, um, good, good uh, episode, Nene. Hey, Greg. Okay. Miley Cyrus may have a new man. It's not about the man. It's about how we found out. 
You know, she was on SNL. She did her appearance this past uh, weekend. Well, SNL is Saturday Night They're legendary for having these after parties. Um, well, she apparently was having a private conversation on her phone. There was a paparazzi standing outside with his camera going through the window. Look at this. Look at this. That's Miley. That's Miley doing it. His name is Theo, as you can see. And, and allegedly, I'll just say allegedly, but there's no allege about what I'm seeing right here. <laughs> Paparazzi is all up in the window of the place. I, I, isn't that disgusting? Yeah. I mean, but good for this show. But just disgusting. <laughs> but dis it's disgusting in general. So I guess you're wondering who Theo is. Yeah. Paparazzi was probably wondering too. Leave it up to my trusty Hot Topics team to do the digging. <laughs> Theo is um, 26 years old, and his last name is Winner, Theo Winner, and he is a winner. He's the son of a big-time Rolling Stones boss by the name of Jan Winner. He was the photographer for Miley's recent Rolling Stones spread, Theo was. And in the past, Theo's dated uh, some girls, including Liv Tyler, in 2011. See? So the, the paparazzi quarterbacked the ball to us, and we found out the rest of the information. See? Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. I never read to you what they were saying. I only counted on you to squint. And if you're in the bathroom listening to this and you're not watching, I for I'm sorry. I meant to read this to you. We don't have a TV in our bathroom, so whenever I'm in the bathroom, I always turn up the TV real loud. So for, for me not to read it, I feel like I'm leaving people who are in the other room out. All right, here's what Miley uh, texts. Miley says, I want to see you too. And then, and then Miley texts, um, should you have your drinky? I'll get this done and come see you. Then Theo texts back, that sounds good. That sounds like a good planny. And then Miley text, what time? You're thinking you'll be homey. See, they played on that. <laughs> anyway, so congratulations, Miley. All those black guys, everybody probably thought it was going to be a black man. No, he's a, a paid white boy named Theo. <laughs> nice. There ought to be a law against that, though, right? Filming over somebody's shoulder. Well, we checked. That's not illegal in New York. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, um, Vivica Fox, our friend to the show, turns 50 next July. Oh. And um, I'm so not scared to turn 50. I just feel like I'm with such a great group of girls. I turn 52 in July. Anyway, she recently opened up to BET about how her taste in men has evolved as she gets older. So funny, Vivica. <laughs> you slay me, girl, with this one. She says, <laughs> I used to be so lustful, I would lose my mind over a six-pack and a smile. Pretty eyes, pretty teeth, forget about it. But I think now I'm looking for a good partner, just a good man, whereas before it would be mostly physical. <laughs> I don't believe her for a minute. Vivica loves a hot guy. Case in point, her ex-fiance. Look at this. Honey, when she visited the show and she brought Slim with her and Slim was, in, you know, in the audience cheering on his girl, I was like, oh, he's hot. <laughs> this is so not going to work out. But, but you can't tell, you know, you can't tell a girl when she feels as though she, it's actually going to work out with a man 19 years younger than her. Really? Them old rotten eggs at 47 years old. I mean, you know, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Look, me too, me too. You know, th there's a man for, just like there's a wig for every occasion, there's a man, there's a man for every occasion. And, the, and a, a smart woman knows the difference. A 25-year-old man, or however, however old he was, he was very young, like in his 20s. A 25-year-old man, that's supposed to be a drive-by, a little something, something to make a girl feel good. You're not supposed to look in his eyes. And she intimated on the couch, she was uh, hedging at, she wants to try to have kids with him. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> this, is, this is a disaster waiting to happen. And I love Viv, and I, you know, Slim seems like a nice guy. Did I tell you he showed up at my book signing when I signed in, in, in Atlanta? 
This is when the Ask Wendy book came out. There were two people that showed up, as a matter of fact. Oh, my gosh, I forgot to tell... I forgot to tell you this? <laughs> Kenya Moore from A Housewives of Atlanta. You know that... You know, no, no, you know that guy that she was involved with that, was, that wouldn't marry her? He, Walter. Walter showed up. And Slim showed up. Anyway, okay, back to the story at hand. So, now, Vivica says that, um, that she has now changed her ways. Uh, she says that now she only wants to date men between 30 and 35. <laughs> Vivica, a mess. <laughs> All right. So, let me organize my cards as I'm talking to you. It's a mess over here. I got my, my tea droppers, everything. Okay, you know the legendary Spanish singer Charo, who's 62? Yeah. Well, she threw some shade at a fellow Latina. <laughs> I love Charo and her husband. Do you remember when they came to visit our show, how lovely they were? Yeah. Charo was just so great and so cute. She was everything that I used to watch in the 70s on The Love Boat. Just, she had that high hair and an outfit too short and tight for a woman of 62, but you love her. <laughs> like, I aspire to be that when I'm 60. Just, just cute. And her husband, her husband wasn't on the couch. You know, Charo and I were talking. Her husband was standing off on the side of the stage, but he was as entertaining as her. They've been married since forever, and he looked at her so lovingly, like, look at my girl, just Aww. running. Like, that, that's how I want to be when I get older. I, don't, I want my husband and son to just let her go. Just, just, just let her go. I want to wear inappropriate high hair, <laughs> short outfits. I just want to let it go. The other day, you know, because we leave the house before. Look at this. That's, I, I want that. I want that. So, you know, we leave the house before our son leaves for school. So I always go, you know, and check on him. And he's always checking over his homework and stuff in the morning. So I went up there. I had on my Halloween costume. <laughs> And it was just so weird because I stood over him and I said, so, you know, how are you doing with the homework? He didn't miss a beat. We had a regular conversation. He didn't even say, like, Mommy, what are you doing? <laughs> or whatever. That's how I want it to be. Just let me be silly and goofy and charo-ish. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I can't wait to show you my costume. <laughs> anyway, charo uh, is often compared to Sofia Vergara, who's 41 years old. Well, they both have the thick Spanish accents, they're bo both very curvy, and they have over-the-top personalities. So the Alma Awards uh, is where uh, Charo was talked to from uh, some paparazzi people. And they asked, um, they also talked to Sofia there as well. So when asked about Sofia, Charo said, Sofia is like Charo with diarrhea. <laughs> So Sophia lashed back at Charo by saying, of course she doesn't like it. No one likes being compared with someone else. And then she turned ever so slightly and looked back over her shoulder and said, especially someone younger. Oh. Charo, that was a read in Espanol. <laughs> And on that note, hot topics are over. Uh, we have a great show for you, everybody. The very handsome Blair Underwood is here. Blair stars in the new NBC show Ironside. Plus, we've got another breast cancer survivor, and we're giving her a fabulous head-to-toe makeover. But up next, don't move. Jordi Lippi is here from Life and Style Weekly magazine, and she's got the inside scoop on the Real Housewives of New Jersey brawl and the shocking lawsuit. So don't miss it. because music superstar John Legend is here and he's going to perform his new song, All of Me. And how dreamy is this? He wrote the song for his supermodel wife. <sighs> it's an all-new Wendy tomorrow. Life and Style magazine with the juicy celebrity stories. Say hello to our friend, Jordy Lippi. Yeah. Jordy, how you doing? 
good. Let us get right to it. Yes. Bruce and Chris. Yes, there is a lot to talk about. We got so much breaking news in overnight. Obviously, we you talked all about how they separated, and we are hearing not only are they separated, but it seems like both of them are sort of moving on kind of quickly. Chris was spotted out just two days before this split was announced with Britney Spears' ex, Jason Trawick. And I heard first thing this morning that not only were they going out to dinner, like you see right here, but he actually went back to the house with her. And not only that, <laughs> it gets better, it gets better. It's the Kardashians, come on. Um, she went to Mexico a few weeks ago with Joe Francis. Oh, I saw. Yeah, 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 oh yeah, there you go. He's not exactly, like, you're, I mean, Joe Fr ew. <laughs> and not only was Joe Francis there, but we were also hearing that Ben Flanick from The Bachelor was also there partying with them as well. Oh. So she is definitely like moving on with these younger guys. Well, that She's picture though, for all she is, and it's not much, she looks, looks good. She looks fantastic she looks there. Good. She looks You look hot. Yeah. How embarrassing, though, to be a Kardashian kid, watching your mother run around like a teenager with, with men half of her age yeah, and more. I mean... It's, like, disgusting. They might be used to it by now, though. Yeah, but, you know, it, ew. <laughs> ew. So, I wouldn't want my mom doing that. I shouldn't like, say that. Me neither, Mommy. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> Look, uh, and then what's going on with Bruce? Bruce? Yeah, Bruce, too. It seems like he's moving on. He was at a Virginia racetrack racing his Lamborghini over the weekend. Very sexy. Uh -huh. And as you see right there, oh. he was surrounded by a bevy of beauties and telling people how he's finally happy, he can live his life the way he wants, and that this is a long time coming, and he's really happy. Good for him. Yeah. All right. I think he'll have no problem landing another lady. No, he won't have a problem at all. <laughs> Um, okay, so in the new Life and Style, the, the big cover story, it's about Kim and Courtney getting into it. Yes, well, you know, Kim just had a baby three months ago, and you would think that she four would... Four months ago, four Jordy. Four months ago, sorry. I see where this is going. <laughs> Come on. And you would think that she would want to stay home in her pajamas and hang out with baby uh, North, but instead, Courtney is giving her some flack because she flew off to Paris for a week with Kanye, leaving the baby at home, and that is not Courtney's parenting style at all. So what, Courtney? Stop being so judgmental. So what? <laughs> I mean, you know, I think that it's great that she went to Paris. She only went for a week when a baby is four months old. I mean, please, with all those nannies and things around, give me a break. It's just, it's just totally not Courtney's style. Courtney's a very handsome. A lot mom. of things aren't her style. <laughs> sit down, Courtney. So you're telling me you would wear that outfit right after, a few months after giving birth? That's pretty revealing for a new mama. Uh, yes, I would. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm not, I'm not with some random man. I'm with my baby's father. There's nothing wrong with being sexy. There's nothing wrong with going to Paris. When you know your man is about to go on a world tour, it's a one little sexy week. They were there for one week. I told you, we put Kevin in school at three months, and I went back to work. <laughs> More power to you. That's it. Well, apparently, Courtney is the one that has a problem with it and is not a fan that Kim doesn't want to be a PTA mom. So Whatever, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, what role is Kanye playing in all this? Well, we're hearing that actually Kim didn't really want to go to Paris, that she wanted to stay home, but she's feeling like she kind of needs to keep up with Kanye and his whole image and the fashion He's thing. He's still not going to marry you, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, I really think we have a new show on our hands. It's like no longer keeping up with the Kardashians, it's keeping up with Kanye. But we'll have to read the magazines for that because he won't put it on TV. No, you know. <laughs> we, I don't think we're going to see North or him on TV anytime soon. So let's talk about the Real Housewives of New Jersey. If you watched last weekend, you saw the fight go down um, with uh, Johnny... The Greek. Or the Greek. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I feel like that's how you'd say it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so give us all the details. So what well, we sort of saw the fight go down, we, you know, you can see right here that there was the cameras are moving around, there were people yelling, but we really don't know what happened. Right. And the reason we don't know what happened is because there was a lawsuit involved. So Johnny the Greek filed criminal charges against Joe Gorga, Chris uh, Larita, and Jacqueline, and the Bravo producers. Now, the criminal charges were quickly put to rest. But now Johnny the Greek is filing a civil lawsuit claiming damages against this because of this whole brawl and that the Bravo producers were conspiring with the men of the Real Housewives to set this up so they get higher ratings. Johnny, you loved your close up there. You and your chick Penny, you loved that. So you knew what you were walking into. Was anybody actually hurt? Well, so I oh. have to, since I couldn't remember all of the allegations, as a result of the brawl, Johnny and Penny claim they have bruising, scarring, disfigurement, fractured bones, facial lacerations, mental anguish, psychological health problems, physical discomfort, pain and suffering, economic losses, and shame and embarrassment. Do they know they're on the Real Housewives of New Jersey? Johnny and Penny like sit down next to Courtney. Please. <laughs> you know, 
Jordy, whenever you come, you always bring good dish. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Jordy Lippy, and for more, uh, more juicy stories, pick up the current issue of Life and Style magazine. It's on newsstands now. Up next, the handsome and talented Blair Underwood is here. <laughs> Producer in his new show Ironside, he stars as a New York City cop who doesn't let his disability get in his way. Take a look. Please welcome the very handsome Blair Underwood. You're nice to look at. Well, as are you look incredible. Thank you. Yeah. I, like you, am preparing for my 50th birthday. Right. Mine is next July. I know yours is August. Uh, August 25th, next year. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been preparing for two years, you know, making sure mind, body, soul, spirit's good. How about you? Um, I haven't been thinking about it. You much. really? <laughs> There's nothing that you want to do before you turn now, you 50? you know what? Or... I got a couple bucket lists, but I've been, I've been checking them off. One was like shark diving, and one was bungee jumping, so I did that the last couple years. Yeah. Um, I got a couple more I'm going to get to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so the show Ironside. Now, right. I was a kid when Ironside came out starring Raymond Burr. Right. Um, but this is not called a reboot of Ironside or... Well, it, you know, it's more, I don't call it a remake because this, you know, Raymond Burr was brilliant and that show ran for yeah. seven years. It was, it's, it's a, it was a huge hit yes. and it's an iconic piece. But it's, it's a reimagining of it. I mean, really, we took the basic elements. This is a guy, he's a detective, and he happens to be in a wheelchair. What is that life like? What, is that, what does that look like in 2013? Yes. What does that look like in New York City? This was set in San Francisco. So uh -huh, it's okay. a... Yeah, so it's a definitely re reimagining. What's your name on the show? Robert Iron, Robert T. Ironside. Robert T. Ironside. known as Bobby T. Uh, Bobby T., okay. Um, <laughs> did they purposely cast a black man or man other than a white man? What was the casting no, I process? I tell you, it, it never came up. I was, last time I was here, I was doing a streetcar here on Broadway. And the head of NBC, Bob Greenblatt, came to see it. And, and from that, we made a deal, a year deal, to basically develop something and find something that we both wanted to do. And this is the result of that deal. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Exactly. You never know who's going to be in the audience. Oh, man. You never, you never know. Watching you. Yeah. Yeah, you never know what's going to come of things. You just got to... So, so did he approach you at the exit d door on Broadway that night? No, or? no. Well, we were, we were kind of like a week before talking about possibly doing something together. And then uh, my manager said, well, look, he's on Broadway now. Go check him out. And he came in the dressing room that, that night and, you know, figured we'd find something. But you never, you never know what you're going to find. You know it's a development thing. I mean, I, I had ideas I brought to them and they were like, nah. Yes. Nah. And then they had this. And yes. This, you know, this was originally by NBC and Universal, and they said, let's, let's try this. So um, I understand that your mother is in a wheelchair. She's she been is. in a wheelchair for yeah. several years. Um, how was that playing a wheelchair-bound detective? Do you have an expert on scene, on, you know, a wheelchair expert on the set and the camera yeah. shots and yeah. things like that? My, my point of reference is my mother, who's been, as you said, in a wheelchair for the last uh -huh. decade. And then uh, there's a cat named David Bryant. And he, he, he's a brother, he's, he's, he's an athlete, he's always an athlete. Was paralyzed 34 years ago at the age of 19, he's in his 50s now. But this, oh, wow. this guy, he's, I, I, I th this characterization is greatly informed by David because he's, you know, he doesn't want to be pushed. He's very physical, he does his own things, he drives his own car, he does everything he can. Everything he can possibly do on his own, he wants to do for himself. Yeah. Which is what this, this Ironside is like. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah, it is. You managed to keep a job like we we, we know i mean really you always yeah. that's a you, good you thing. and me got that in common yeah well right? you know it's nice to be working and um you know blair is married to the lovely desiree they've been married for 19 years yeah. and they have three <laughs> gorgeous don't you remember reading in the magazines that um didn't you ask her in paris under the eiffel tower i, did. I remember that you from remember back that? in the day Man, that's right and then your oldest son who's 16 his name is paris his name is paris that's right and, uh, look at the gorgeous family. The <laughs> Underwoods, you, everybody. Oh, look at you. Oh, thank you. 
Okay, so... You have, a 12, you have a 12-year-old son. He's 13. Son is our young, he's 13 now. Yeah. Yeah. How old is... Your youngest is 12. He's 12. And He'll then be 13. your daughter in the middle is... She's 14. 14. Yeah. And then Paris is 16. 16, right. <gasps> okay. Yes, yeah, so that's what's full of teenagers and, and the 12-year-old. He's... For all intents and purposes, as a teenager. Yeah, he what, thinks he thinks he is. What is your daughter into? I was talking the other day, saying that the bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah season and the 13th birthday party, it's, it's giant. She's kind of through that, but my son, who's 12, is, is he's on that that circuit right now. Yeah, just getting which into is, uh, that. Which is which is big, but but you do want a what a black mitzvah? Then it, for, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he wants he wants it in the style of these parties that he goes to in the town. Yeah, you know, with all it's, the fanfare and it's a lot of fanfare. Yeah, um, but you know, I tell you, my thing is. You know, because they go to a lot of them. I yeah. said, and, and they're often invited to the ceremony in the beginning. So I said, you hit the synagogue, do the ceremony, do the religious aspect, do, yes. what, do the right part, then you go party. Then go party. <laughs> you can't just go, can't Good just go one. to party. Now, what's your secret to a happy marriage? Because, uh, yeah, I read all the magazines. I know you do. You know, and I've never read anything about you and, and Desiree. Thank God. Yes. <laughs> so, how, uh, what, what's a secret? For, what works for you guys? What works for us is, uh, um, how, how do you say that type of What works for us is staying connected. I mean, really, and staying uh, and communicating, continuing to always communicate and never grow apart from each other. Yeah. You know, and it's not easy. You got to work on it. And you the know. kids, the kids, of course, are the glue. You know. Yeah, kids, kids keep it together. Is she stay at home so she watches the kids and makes runs she's the household? Been, yeah, she's been stay at home. She worked a year after we got married, and then she decided to uh, to stay home. Which, Please, which I'm is married to Blair Underwood, and he keeps a job. I'm ah. not working. <laughs> I hear that, Desiree. No, she fought me in the beginning. She wanted to keep working. I said, oh, well, you do that. And then I think after a year of it, she's like, you know what? I'm good. Aww. I'm good. And you were, gave her your blessing? Nah, you know, my mother and a was credit my mother in a, in a credit card. Yes. <laughs> my mother was a stay-at-home. So if, if, if she was able to do that, you know, I wanted her to be able to do that. Oh, yeah. that's a good life. But you like working. You're great at what you do. I mean, I, I like working because I, I wasn't born into money. Yeah. Well, I would I love either. to, you know, be the little woman at home. Yeah? Yeah. But then Maybe we'd have not. no Wendy. We'd have no Wendy show, you know what I'm saying? Listen. My sister Melissa, by the way, just blew me up and said, please tell Wendy hello. She's a huge fan of you. Oh, hi, Melissa. Oh, yeah, Melissa Ann. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Blair, congratulations on Ironside. Yeah, thank you. you know, thank you very Ironside, much. everybody, airs Wednesday nights at 10 on NBC. Right Clap after Law & Order. Right after Law & Order. Wow. SVU. Power two Night, hours. You know what I'm saying? Good one. Yeah. All right, clap it up for Blair Underwood. You keep it here. We'll be right back. I love having my friends around just to dish. Siggy Flicker, Don Lemon, and Jane Velez Mitchell join me for my next Hot Talk panel. Plus, it's Flashback Friday, and we're taking a look back at some of our favorite moments from the show. It's an all-new Wendy Friday. Wendy, how you doing? How you doing, Wendy? I'm Darcy. Hi, Darcy. And my question is, I have a close co-worker who always acts to bring her kids over for a play date. However, her kids are not the best behaving kids. The last time they were over, I had writing all over my bathroom wall, and they were playing kickball with the decorative balls on my table. So how do I ask her, you know, or tell her that I don't want her to bring her kids over without being rude or judging her kind of as a parent? Well, how old are the kids? Seven, two, and one. Okay, see, I have no problem talking to kids. Them, like, look, young lady, <laughs> last time you were here, you did this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna do this to Mrs. Hunter's house again. That's who I am at home. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna do this to Mrs. Hunter's house again. Mm -hmm. Now, where's your brother? And put him in one of those chairs and have him sit right there. And also, there's a way that moms can talk to each other. You can talk to her. Just make sure you talk to her with that beautiful smile. Okay. So, so you're gonna give her the blow verbally, but your body language is going to be nice, kind, and, and mothering, okay? okay. Right. There's a way you can fix this problem. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> How you doing? Hi, Wendy. I'm Chris. How you doing? Hi, Chris. For five months, I've been talking with a really close friend from school about moving in together in New York, which, you know, apartments are awful. Right. The month we're going to start looking for places, she stopped taking my calls, stopped taking my texts. She wouldn't see me at all, and I'm not sure why. And a, a couple days ago, I saw on Facebook that she was living with someone else and didn't tell me anything about it. So I want to know, should I confront her and tell her that I'm hurt? First of all, the relationship is over. So, you, so it might as well go up in a blaze of glory. 
<laughs> you bring it right to her door. You tell her about herself, lead with your pinky, and don't forget to snap your neck. Okay. <laughs> okay? All right, exactly. Do it. Exactly. Uh, everybody, we're going to take a break. Are we going to take a break now? And we'll be back? And we'll be right back. <laughs> party and be a part of my live studio audience visit wendyshow.com to request your free tickets today and make sure you dress to impress i can't wait to see you welcome back we're still doing ask wendy how you doing how you doing? Hey, Wendy, I'm Heather, and I have a friend since elementary school who wants to be a professional singer. The only thing is she can't hold a note to save her life. <laughs> and she's getting older, and I'd like her to pursue another career. So how can I tell her that without sounding like a hater? Well, most of the girls, including Jennifer Lopez, and most of them can't hold a note to save their life. <laughs> That is not a read, that is just my opinion. But what I'm, what I'm going to tell you is, is that a lot, you know, with the auto-tune and all that stuff that they do, and then they put you in distracting clothes, and next thing you know, you're on the radio, and you're singing your song, it's not a big deal these days not to be able to hold a note. However, I understand what you're saying, and there's really no way that you can tell her. So just, just support her. Chances are she won't get signed anyway, because... <laughs> of the situation every single church is filled with people who sing well every single you know voice class at, in high school like glee has girls who and guys who sing well there's one in a million that ends up on the hit parade that ends up like miley cyrus the same thing goes for a lot of really unique jobs including this singing and how old is she she's 26 all right well that's not too old but um chances are she, she, well, i mean you know here's you know what you should encourage your friend to do always have a plan B. And I encourage everybody with that, you know? No matter what it is that you want to do in life, have a plan B. And I don't mean a sucky plan B. I mean something good. Something that she would really like to do if she doesn't become a singer. Okay? Excellent. You're welcome, Heather. How you doing? How you doing? Good. My name's Amy. Um, I've been seeing this guy for about eight months now. He says we're exclusive, but he doesn't want to call me his girlfriend. So, um... I'm just a little confused. I want to know if you think titles matter. They matter in every single point of life. <laughs> they matter, you know. There's a difference between wife, girlfriend. There's a difference between a hookup versus a girlfriend. There's a difference between being a friend versus an acquaintance. Title, to me, t titles always matter. Um, so, yes. Um, but he said you're exclusive. Right. So, so that means he's exclusively sleeping with you. <laughs> with laughter all day. That's okay. I know how to stand by myself in my opinion. Listen, listen. So that means you're, you're exclusively sleeping together. Can we talk like adults? Yes, exactly. all right, that means he's not sleeping around with other girls. The idea that he hasn't given you a title makes me suspicious because sleeping together is something that you do in the privacy of your home. A girlfriend is somebody whose hand you hold, whose hair you move out of her eyes while you're out in public. A girlfriend is the one who'll be going for Thanksgiving dinner. And a girlfriend is the one that you buy a gift for, for Christmas. So I am suspicious, and I feel like you need to talk to him about this. Don't be all upset. Again, use the smile, lead with calm body language, but ask him what his deal is with, uh, you know, because he's your boyfriend. Oh, we're being cut off by music. We'll talk through the commercial. Anyway, up next, everybody, we've got a fabulous uh, young woman who's a survivor of breast cancer, and we're giving her a makeover. Keep it here. Friend. Her name is Liliana Vasquez, and all month long, we've been giving fabulous makeovers to brave women battling breast cancer. So, today, our young lady's name is Giselle. You know, she graduated with her MBA last year, and then she was diagnosed with breast cancer at just 29 years old. So, she says, cancer schmancer, it's not going to stop me from having a fabulous 30th birthday, which is coming up. Take a look. 
Hi, Wendy. How you doing? My name is Giselle. Last year, I graduated with an MBA, and I decided to reward myself by getting breast implants, which I had always wanted. I got them done, and sadly, less than a year later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. It's been a long journey, and I still have a ways to go with reconstruction and radiation, but at least I'm almost done with chemo. I'm also turning 30 soon, so I'd really like to hit this milestone with a new look and a new outlook and with breast cancer way, way, way behind me. So, Wendy, can you help a girl out? Yep, we can. Giselle's family and friends are here. Hello. You guys ready to see Giselle? Come on out, Giselle. Perfect party outfit. It's festive, it's fun, it's flirty, it totally fits her personality. You know, great accessories. And the color yellow to me is so vibrant. She's such a vibrant, strong yes. woman. This dress really celebrates who she is. And then I color blocked with the shoe. You know, sometimes you just do it with clothes. Color block with your shoes, shoe. ladies. A little purple, a little yellow. She looks fantastic. Yes, and I love your wig. <laughs> her wig is from my new wig line, Wendy Williams Hair World. Um, my wigologist, Antoine, helped her style it. Uh, he wet it and he blow dried it. But if you like that natural tight curl look, this one does that as well. Um, and that's called the super sexy. How do you feel? Fierce. <laughs> And I'm making a donation to the American Cancer Society's wig program. To find out how you can help fight cancer, uh, breast cancer, go to wendyshow.com. Liliana, another great makeover. Um, her new book is called The Cheap Chica's Guide to Style. It's available on pre-order now. We'll be right back. I gotta go. Thank you so much to all my guests, Blair Underwood, Life and Style Weekly's Jordi Lippi, and of course, Liliana Vasquez and our breast cancer survivor, Giselle. My co-host, my studio audience, I could not do this show without your encouragement. So thank you for being here. Tomorrow, for the first time on Wendy, we've got music superstar John Legend. He's gonna chat and then he's gonna perform. And of course, all the latest juicy, juicy hot topics. I love you for watching today. See you next time on Wendy. Bye.